So last week, uh, Andy, uh, we're teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit the last two weeks, and hopefully today you'll get some insight on the Holy Spirit and uh, desire to want to know Him more. Amen? Amen. Father God has a gift. Andy did a masterful job yes. last week on, on laying out why the Holy Spirit was given and why we should desire the Holy Spirit and the power that we receive from the Holy Spirit. And then none of us are here today unless the Holy Spirit draws us to God anyway. So the Holy Spirit has a very important aspect in our lives. He will teach us truth in the Word of God. Amen? Yes. Matter of fact, it says the Word of God tells us that He leads us to all truth. So even in your workplace, when things are out of order, you kind of know that in your spirit. You go, what is that? The Holy Spirit is telling you and revealing you truth about that situation. I think God has provided for us so much so we can be the glory of God in the earth. Amen? Isn't that what we're supposed to be? We're supposed to represent Jesus yes. in the earth. And, and I just love that fact that we're not left alone, right? God has given us this power this uh, spirit, if you will, his spirit to empower us, just like Jesus was empowered to do the work of his ministry. Yes. We have that same spirit in us so we can do God's ministry in the earth. Amen. Wow. I am so excited about how if we would just understand that Father God loves us so much and that he God gave us the gift of salvation. And when I said yes to Jesus, my life changed that very moment. My spirit was dead to God, and then it became alive. Matter of fact, the Word of God says I was an enemy of God, which I probably was because I didn't acknowledge Him in anything, right, before that. But now I just want to be with Him and be closer to Him. And so my love for God has grown over the years. The Spirit of God has revealed Himself to me more and more. I understand, I, maybe I understand, I'm probably not fully yet, the love of God for the world. Amen. I mean, I want to love the world like God loves the world. I want to see through His eyes and have His compassion. I just want to move um, like He does. And I know I'm not quite there yet. Can we say amen? But I'm working on it. I believe God is doing that because I want more of Him. Yes. And today, I just think part of our message is that, uh, that we have to want more. Amen. I want more. I want more. I want more. More. Whatever God has for me, I want that. And if I can encourage you this morning to have that same attitude, God, whatever you have for me, I want it. I don't want to say, God, no, just give me this much of you, and that's good. I want everything that God has for me so I can do what he's called me to do, on it, what he called all of us to do on the earth. Amen? And he mentioned earlier that, and most of you know this, we're a family of servant missionaries. And we believe that not only as a family, we gather together and we learn and encourage each other, right? We're here to serve one another and serve the world. But also with this aspect that is so different, I think, from what I've learned in other churches and what I've even taught myself is that we're missionaries, too. The missionary responsibility is not just left up to a certain group of people. Every believer in the world has a responsibility as a missionary to share God's love and message of hope to a dying and hopeless world. That's what we're supposed to do. So God, I want more of that. I don't know, I want to, I want to have, I want more of your spirit. I want to be empowered to do what yes. you call me to do. I want, I want whatever you have so I can do your work. And and that can be, in, and as we learn, we can be in every aspect of life. So I want to just go back to the promise a little bit in the word. I'm going to show you in the word of God, the promise. But I want your hearts right now to just listen for a moment to God's spirit. Amen. Can you just close your eyes for me, with me, and I want to pray. Father God, we love you, and we thank you that you provided salvation so that I may be called your son and your daughter. You forgave me so much, God, and I am so grateful for that. And Spirit of God, I understand fully that you drew me to the very cross of Jesus Christ. You drew me understand that Jesus died for my sins. You drew me there, that I am cleansed now by Jesus' blood. I thank you, Spirit, for that. And Holy Spirit, you are encouraging me to, to go deeper and get a bigger understanding of how great, and how deep, and how wide that love is, and my responsibility to go forward with that. Holy Spirit, help me to understand the words that are spoken this morning. Let's go with, if you don't mind, uh, let's do
turn it up in your Bibles to John chapter 14. And I just want to explain one little thing uh, in there to show you God's heart for us when it refers to being baptized in God's Holy Spirit. The, in my Bible, chapter 14, these letters are in red, so this is a, I know these are words that Jesus spoke. It was kind of an A for me. If you're looking on your iPhone or your iPad or whatever, it's probably not like this, but in these words are Jesus spoke. And he was talking to his disciples because right before Jesus was going to fulfill what God called him to do, go to the cross, he wanted to assure his disciples that, listen, you're not going to be by yourself. There's going to be a time of turmoil. There's going to be some fear. There's going to be some things happening in your life. But I want you to know, be at peace because I have provided for you uh, the Holy Spirit so you can understand that after I leave, there's, you're going to be able to be empowered to do the work that I've called you. So he says it this way. In verse 15, chapter 14, verse 15, it says this, If you love me, you will obey what I command. He's talking to the disciples. I think about that. All the disciples with that live with Jesus, walk with Jesus, spend time with Jesus. Now he's telling them, hey, obey what I told you to do. And he says, I will ask the Father, and the Father will give you another counselor. Now, Andy shared last week that we learned in verse, uh, chapter 15 that the, the gift of the Holy Spirit was from God himself. God, our Father, gave us this gift for us. It's a good gift, right? So the Holy Spirit is a good gift for everybody to receive. Now, Jesus explained a little bit more that this gift... That the, he's going to ask the Father to give you the gift. So the Father is to give her the gift. Jesus is the baptizer of the gift. He said, I'll give you another counselor to be with you forever. So how long? The Holy Spirit is going to be with us forever. Amen? And we can turn off the Holy Spirit or we can accept the Holy Spirit. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Amen? The Spirit is the forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept this, Him because it neither sees Him or knows Him. But you know Him for he lives with you and will be in you. So when you say yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit, now we have a, uh, when we say yes to Jesus, we were, uh, we gave our life to Jesus. We said, I'm going to start following Jesus. The Bible tells us that we are born again, right? Our spirit now becomes alive to God's spirit. The spirit is deposited in us, sealing us for, uh, as a, a guarantee for our salvation. So we know the spirit of God is in us. Can you say Amen. Yeah. And the Spirit of God is here. So now the Spirit of God is going to reveal some things to us, right? It says, it says the world cannot, uh, I'm sorry, but you know him because he lives in you. So the Holy Spirit is in us. And remember Andy shared last week that rivers of living water will flow out of us, right? And the Spirit of God, referenced in the Bible, is always referred to water also. So we say the Spirit of God is in us, and out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water. So the Spirit of God is going to flow out of us, Amen. Wow, this guy, this Holy Spirit is important, isn't he? Yes. He's really important. If he's going to teach us truth and he's going to bring life out of us, then it's really important. It says, look at verse 18. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me any anymore, but you will see me because I live and also, and also, you also will live. So now the Holy Spirit not only tells us that Jesus, well, they knew Jesus was going to going to be crucified. He said he was going to crucify, but he said he's going to live. He's already prophesying that, hey, I'm going to rise from the dead. I'm going to receive that right hand of the Father. I'm making an intercession for you right now. Right? What is Jesus praying for us right now? If Jesus is up in heaven, he rose from the dead, he's interceding for us. What is he interceding? I think one of the things that Jesus says, just would you listen to the Holy Spirit? Yes. Would you allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life? Would you let the Holy Spirit help you in your weaknesses? Would you, when you feel weak and when you feel discouraged and when you feel this distraught, would you let the Holy Spirit help you? Would you, matter of fact, go to Jude and read Jude that says, if you pray in the Spirit, then you would have, what, encouragement, right? That you could overcome everything because the Holy Spirit in us. Praise God. I mean, the Holy Spirit wants to be, I mean, if you need a helper, guess what? The Holy Spirit is that helper. Amen. If you don't understand something, the Holy Spirit is going to help you understand it, right? Man, I need the Holy Spirit. You know what I find in my Christian walk when I'm not when I'm not listening to the Holy Spirit? It seems like it's when I stumble and fall. Can you anybody say amen to that? Uh, when I when I when I'm being selfish and I don't want to listen and, and, and do, I mean, I'm just want to, I don't want to be a Christian today. I mean, maybe not that far. Yeah. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? I, don't, I just don't feel like it. 
And then I go crawl up on my bed, you know, I put my blankets over my head. I'm just trying to do my, I just want, I don't want to listen. I can't hide from God. Right. I mean, even in, in Isaiah, I think it says, you can even hide, try to hide under a rock. You can't, you can hide in a cave. You can go wherever. David said that. Wherever I go, the Spirit of God is there. He's always there. Praise God. Don't you want to, like, hear the Holy Spirit? Don't you want, like, I want more. I want to move. I mean, Paul always says throughout the, the epistles, he says, walk in the Spirit, be in the Spirit, listen to the Spirit, right? Why? Because he knows the Spirit's going to give you what you need to be the witness for God in the world, amen? We are all, oh, I think, I think, why does confusion come to denominations over what is right and wrong? Because they don't listen to the Spirit of God. I just want to throw that out there today. Preach it, brother. Huh? Why does things? Why do Christians get so messed up in things? Because they're not listening to what we're listening. If Ephesians is correct, we're supposed to be walking in unity. Every believer, I don't care what country you're from. I think there's there's only one gospel. There's only one Jesus, right? Man's put all the rules on us so we can be religious. But if we listen to the Spirit, we can throw all those shackles off. We can put all that stuff that binds us on, and we'd be free in God and say, "Yes, I'll." I'll preach the gospel and I might lose my job. I'll preach the gospel and they might cut off my head. I don't care what happened because the power of God is in me. Yeah. I'm going to stand up for Jesus. See, the reason yeah. that Christians are weak today is because we don't allow the Spirit of God in our lives. Yeah. I'm way off my nose. Yeah. <laughs> we got to stand up for Jesus in yeah. Madison, Wisconsin. That's where we're at together as a family of believers. We got to say, yes. I don't care what they say. Jesus, I will not compromise what I know is true. Jesus died for the sins of the world. Why do people get offended by that? Because they like darkness, the Bible says, more than light. And we're supposed to bring the light to the world. Amen? We can't do it on our own. That's why Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. I don't want you to stumble and fall. I don't want you to walk in confusion. I want you to walk with confidence and boldness and empower so you can do the work of the ministry. Man, I don't know what your occupations are, but whatever you do, you do it for the glory of God. You can't do that by your own because you get caught up in a world system. I have to step on the people next to me so I can look good. I have to step on the people around me so I can get promotions. And, and it's just the opposite of God. I'm going to lift these hurting people up. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to exalt them. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you get promoted or you get advancements or whatever. I, I tell you, I lived it. I know. It's crazy. I don't, I don't understand God's economy. If you walk in the Spirit, God will bless you. Amen? And what happens, the Spirit of God can't hang out with sin, though. The Spirit of God, even as believers, reveals sin in our lives. Or unbelief. Or whatever confusion that's going on in our head. Or whatever things that happened in our past that caused us to be like we are today. God wants to heal all those things so we can walk in His power. Amen? He doesn't want we Christians walking around the earth trying to proclaim the gospel. We have, listen, we have authority over enemies. Every demonic force that is in the air, Satan is in charge of the air right now until all things are made new again, right? So we have authority over all that, over demonic everything. But we have to be clean inside. We have to be a vessel full of the Holy Ghost and power, amen? And when we are, we have authority over the enemy. I'm, I wasn't going to go there, but since I have this crowd of believers that have a bunch of faith here today, I thought I would just go there, right? I'm not teaching novice today. I'm teaching believers here that love God. So I go, let's go a little further. You have authority over everything in the world. I was talking to my friend Mike Shreve. I told you about that the other day. He was a yoga master. He, he uh, led many people down that road. When he became a believer, every student that was under him in, at FSU and at uh, the other Florida State, I can't remember where it was, Florida State, it was where it was at, uh, all those people became believers. Wow. Every one of them. Mike gave up everything. He just walked, you know, the whole hippie generation, right? Long hair, walking out carrying his Bible, hitchhiking, sharing Jesus wherever he went, right? Power to take authority over the enemy. Let me tell you something. You have so much authority in your life because of God, because you're his children. That you can close down stores that are demonic. Yes. So on University Avenue here in Madison, there was a store between our house and here. It was on the right hand side near the, by the pancake house. It was this new age store. All this crystals and all this 
demonic symbols they had in the store. I was looking for a birthday present for Tina. <laughs> so I just like, well, I've never been in that store. Let me go in that store. But as soon as I, I didn't get out of my car, as soon as I got out of my car, I knew this was not a godly place. The, the demonic, am I saying, I don't, nobody ever understands this, right? This is, I'm not saying nothing that's untrue, right? You're all believers here, right? So I, I, I have a little confidence and share this with you. I probably would share it with a, a, a different problem. But you guys said, let's go here. So this door was so, I walked through it. I'm like, okay, I have authority over this. I, I'm not afraid. Because Jesus in me, right? It's power of God in me, right? So I'm going to go check this out. I walk through the aisles, right? Because I want, I mean, I, I mean, talk about spirits, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, kind of Asian stuff, kind of, you know what I'm saying, just these these things, right? The spirit, the different spirits, right? I left there, I, as soon as I left there, I rebuked that. I said, in the name of Jesus, close the store, right? Within a week, it was closed. I didn't know what was going behind the scenes. I didn't know they were going bankrupt. I didn't know none of that stuff. All I said, this is not a place that I want in my city, right? Yeah. There's places on State Street that are like that too. I pray the same way, you know. They haven't all closed yet, but listen, I believe God wants, there's going to be a revival in our spirits about a, our relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to empower us to go and cast out these demons. So those, it's not the idea of, oh yeah, close down the store. No, I want those people in that store to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's my heart. It's not that I, I closed their business. I probably had nothing to do with it besides that God was testing me in my face so I could grow up a little bit. God wants to fill you with His Holy Spirit. We all have the Holy Spirit in us. God wants the rivers of living water to flow out of us so we can have the power of God in our lives. Amen? Yes. We don't have to be weak to weak. Well, what is God's will for my life? No, we know what God's will is. We don't have to fear anything because God is with you. His Spirit is with us to overcome every situation in the world. Hallelujah. Let's go to what God, uh, what, we, what Jesus, some more words of Jesus. Let's go to the book of Acts, all right? Um, and see how this Spirit was given. And most of us know this, okay? But I, we know the stories, but we have to walk in the Spirit, amen? God, I want more. I want to be like Peter, stand up and preach and 5,000 get saved. You know, boldness that would save all the religious people at that time, all the persecution that could happen. They could have arrested Peter, and he could have been put in jail. He could have been crucified just like Jesus was crucified, but he wasn't because the Spirit of God was now given to the people so they could do the work of the ministry so the gospel of Jesus Christ could be spread through all the world. But let's, let's look at Jesus' word in Acts chapter 1 and it's, it's instructions in uh, to the disciples after his resurrection, after he conquered grave, after Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave, then he tells his disciples to go into Jerusalem. Verse um, number five, four, right there it says, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised. Who gives the gift now? The father gives the gift. And the father, is the father going to give you a bad gift? He's going to give you, as we read in John, a good gift, right? And he's going to give it to you. Which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water. But in a few days you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Remember when Jesus was baptized? So everybody came to John. There Jesus went down to the, to the, to the river. And got baptized by John. Right? John said, I can't baptize you. I'm not even worthy to untie your shoes. But Jesus said, no, we have to do this. <clears throat> and he baptized Jesus. And as he came out of the water, it says the Spirit of God descended onto Jesus like what? Yeah. Like a dove, right? He came down on Jesus. And then, boom, Jesus did all his earthly ministry after he was in power. Jesus needed the Holy Spirit. Don't you think we need the Holy Spirit? When Jesus went out in the mountainside to pray after he did all these wonderful things, after he fed the 5,000, after he cast out demons, and all that, Jesus went away to be with the Father. Don't you know he prayed in the Spirit? Amen. Don't you think we need that same power to pray in the Holy Spirit so we can have and be empowered to do the work that He did? Look at the miracles that Jesus said. And Andy shared this a couple weeks ago. We can do those works and we can do more of those works. Why aren't we doing more works than Jesus did? Because we're afraid of the Holy Spirit. We don't know Him. We know of Him, but we don't know Him. I want you to say, yes, God, I want to know Him more. I want you Holy Spirit in my life so I can do what you told me I should do. At a minimum. 
You could do more works than Jesus did. That should be our minimum. Right? That should be like, okay, I'm praying, I'm walking down the street, and this, I, you know, do you ever do this, and some of you might attest this, you know, you know you should go talk to that person, but you don't. Right? I should go talk to that person, I got my schedule, I got to be going to the grocery store, I got work to do, I, I'm so busy, but you know what? They were busy in Jesus' day. But they didn't have iPhones and stuff, you know, they didn't have all this electronic. You know, it doesn't matter, we're all busy. But the same Holy Spirit that moved upon Jesus to break bread and pray over and feed five thousand or cast the demons out of the demoniac, all those, or, or go to the, or forgive the sins of that lady that was caught in the act of adultery, or talk to the woman at the well about her life, right? All the disciples were like, hey, we're hungry, we're trying to go to McDonald's, let's get something to eat, you know, Jesus, no, Jesus, go ahead, go get some food, right? I'm, I'm going to stay here. And that woman came to get water, and wow, Jesus told her about her life, and she was, she was the first evangelist, I think. Her whole town, the Bible says, got saved. After she heard the truth, God has, the truth is in you by the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, I want more. Holy Spirit, I want more of you. I want more. And then look at verse 7. It says, this is what he says to the disciples. Said, it is not for you to know the time or date the Father has set for his coming. Because they were asking about uh, Jerusalem being restored to its uh, rightful place, but that they kind of missed it still again. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. And this is what I tell people this is for everybody, all believers. So this is kind of one of those things the Holy Spirit was given for us. So all believers will have the Holy Spirit. Because look what it says. You'll be uh, the, the witnesses of Jerusalem. So the disciples were from Jerusalem. So they could be the witness to the Jewish people in, Jer in, Israel, in, in Jerusalem. And in Judea. So it goes a little bit further away. And then Samaria, which is with north of Jerusalem, right? And then it says to the ends of the earth. Well, they couldn't do that. It was a promise then to them that the Spirit of God was going to come on them. They're going to see this power so they could be a witness in the whole world. Well, he think the promise is for all of us yes. because we're the witness to the whole world. How many countries do we have represented here? I mean, we're, you know what I'm saying? We're going to spread the gospel all over the place. That's what we're supposed to do. So it's not limited to just the story in Jerusalem to the disciples. That's what some people say. This is just for them. No, it's not. It's for everybody, for you and me. So we have to accept the truth, the fact that the Word of God tells us that we can have the power of God through His Spirit to be His witnesses to the world. That's why, why this whole thing is about why do we have the Holy Spirit? Well, it drew us to Him. It drew us to God so we can be convicted of our sins. And now we're, we're born again. We're saved. We're, we're sealed. All those things are wonderful. But also the, the Holy Spirit has more. So we can be the witness of God. So that's our job. That's why we change our, our whole thing in our church. A family of servant missionaries. We miss the missionary part in church. Because church is about, hey, just come and receive. Sit down. I can minister to you. Love on you. You feel good when you leave, right? No, that's not church. We, I've got to apologize to you. I think I preached it wrong. I have to repent of that. I've been telling people, just show up. I was building my little church uh, kingdom here for Pastor Bob. I was like, I'm building the church. And then all of a sudden I woke up because the Spirit of God said, you're done. I don't like to talk to you, but sometimes I gotta, yeah. you know, you got to talk direct to me. What are you doing? What are you, I'm here to build a church, not you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I give this back to you. Matter of fact, a few, about two years ago, I resigned the church. I'm no longer going to be pastoring this church. Jesus is. Amen? His, his church. You are His people. Amen? And so now we can empower you to do ministry. Like it says in Ephesians, we want to empower to understand the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to teach you that what I'm telling you and what Pastor Andy is telling you is true. Right? If you hear from the Holy Spirit something different than what we're, we're teaching wrong, be bold and tell us. Hey, I don't think what you said was quite right. I'm going to be open to that, right? Because the same spirit that's in you is the same spirit that's in me, right? And we're going to encourage each other to walk in the spirit so we can do the things that God called us to do. But pastor, I've got a very busy life. I don't care. You're a Christian first, and then you're a scientist. You're a Christian first, and you're a salesperson. You're a Christian first, and then you're a great husband or a great wife and a great mom and dad. You're, you're a follower of Jesus first. And when you put that in order in your life, oh my God. Everything comes into focus now. I looked through darkly through a glass, like lens. I couldn't see quite clearly, but God put some new bifocals on. I can see. Oh, I'm a child of God first. 
I have the Spirit of God to help me to be a better husband, wife, daughter, son. What was that you said? You work a delivery. What was that thing you said you did? I'm trying. Delivery driver. I'll be the best delivery driver that God ever created. When I go in and see people, they're going to see the joy of the Lord in me, and they're going to say, why are you so happy? Because yes. Jesus is in me. I give an answer right away. I don't give an answer, well, I had a good day, I got a lot of tips. No. I'm happy because God saved me from my sin. I'm joyful because I have the Spirit of God in me. And, and you can have this too. You want some of this? It's better than the beer you're drinking anyway. <laughs> don't be drunk with wise, but be full of the Holy yes. Spirit. Hallelujah, man. You want to be happy? Get full of the Holy God, I'm not a happy person. I'm always grumpy. Why not? Because I'm not full of the Spirit. Yeah. I got a real good answer for I got an answer for everybody. When you come to my counseling, if you ever counsel, counsel, you come to my office on counseling, I said, well, you're not walking in the Spirit. You're not full of the Spirit. Your problem is because you don't listen to God. You don't, you're not going to listen to me either, so I'm just going to tell you the truth. <laughs> right? That's my counseling session. That's why I give it off to somebody else to do because I just like, oh, oh. I'm not that, I'm not compassionate. Don't get me wrong. I love to, I love to hear people's problems. But I'm going to say, okay, do you want me to make you feel good or do you want to know the truth? The Spirit of God will come into your life if you allow Him to and it will convict you of your sin in your life that you might have to repent of so you can be a better husband or a better wife. Uh -huh. Right? Come on. I want to tell the truth this morning, right? Or, or a better pastor or a better worship leader or whatever you, whatever you do. I want, to be, I want to be full of the Spirit of God. I want the Spirit of God to flow out of everything of me. You know what I'm saying? I want God, I want people to be drawn to God because when we're walking in the Spirit, we're drawing people to Jesus. We're not drawing people to ourselves. We're drawing people to Jesus. So it doesn't matter how many people show up on Sunday. We're going we're gonna to be Christ-like. We're going to be full of the Spirit. Oh, I want more. How many want more? Yes. Huh? yes. We want more. Okay, well, let me get to the second point here. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Acts chapter 2. It says this, okay? Look at Acts chapter 2. And this is when the Spirit of God came on the people. And then the disciples in the upper room began to speak in tongues. And they spoke in all these different languages. And all the people that were in Jerusalem, remember, they were there for Pentecost. They were there for Passover and Pentecost. And so there was people from all over Asia, all over that known world that were coming to Jerusalem to do their annual sacrifice and, and all those things, right? So they began, the power says, it's like a wind, a mighty wind, and fire sat on them, and they began to speak in tongues, and all these things happened. Now look at verse, verse, uh, every, you guys know that story, right? I don't want to explain that because I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but you, the Spirit of God came and spoke in language that was from God. It was not their natural language, it was not a language. So if I begin to speak in Spanish really good, it's God did it to me because I don't have any Spanish in me at all or, or Mandarin. I don't have none. But, you know, if God put on me that, I would say it and I would, you guys would know it and bear witness to that. I wouldn't even know what I'm speaking. That's what happened. There was a language that came in that the known person didn't know. That's what the Holy Spirit did. So that happens when you're filled with a baptized in the Spirit. You begin to speak in other tongues. It says other tongues. I don't, hey, I, I pray in spirit sometimes. Like when I, you talk about full of spirit. And I'm like, when I feel weak and discouraged, I get in my little prayer closet, I begin to pray. And I pray in the spirit. I don't know what I'm praying in my mind, but in my spirit becomes alive to the Holy Spirit. And I'm, and when I'm done praying, however long that is, it could be a few minutes, it could be an hour, but I, I'm, I'm encouraged. Yes. Amen. I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged. I can go on. I can handle that situation. I'm encouraged. The Spirit of God is going to encourage you. Amen. There's a benefit to having the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Right? I don't have to walk this thing out by myself. The Spirit of God has helped me walk this thing out. Amen. Amen. For God's glory. Amen. Look what happened. So Peter, I'm just going to use an example because when Peter, everybody knows Peter made a lot of mistakes. Right? He was bold. He said a lot of things. Even Jesus said, get me. Right before he went to the cross, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, get me behind me, Peter. You're not speaking of the godly thing. You're speaking out of your out of the, of negative, out of the flesh. Because Peter wanted to defend Jesus, right? You ain't gonna go to the cross. You're not gonna die. Got out of the sword and cut off the high priest's assistant's ear, right? And then Jesus uh, picked up the ear and go, "Oh, Peter, you know, you did it again. Put the ear back on. You know, here, arrest me because I gotta fulfill what the Father told me I have to do. Amen. I have to fulfill what God, my Father, told me to do. And so." Walk. You weren't walking in the right spirit. But then this Peter, now full of the Holy 
Holy Spirit after the day of Pentecost. He received the promise that God said you have. And now look at Peter. Come on, look at this with me. Verse 14 in chapter 2 of Acts. It says, Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men and women, because the crowd was 120, so Mary's, there was Jesus' mother was there, we know Mary was there, there's a lot of people in the upper room. They were speaking in tongues, and they said, man, they look like a bunch of drunk people. So if you're full of the Holy Spirit, maybe you look like you're drunk. I don't want to look like I'm drunk. I don't want to look foolish. Hey, Jesus went on the cross, hey, naked before the world, Look, every ounce of blood fell from his body for us. And if we can't confess Jesus before the world, then maybe Jesus won't confess us before his Father. Right. That's the truth. So sick. So, wow. so we need this Holy Spirit to help us so we can confess Jesus before the world. So Peter stood with boldness, right? Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only the ninth hour in the morning. No, this is no, no, no. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. You go back to the Joel in the Old Testament, you can see the same words here. In the last days, God said, God who God the Father said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Let's underline that in your Bible. All people. He was talking to who here? The Jews, right? Most of the Jewish people were in Jerusalem from all over the place. They were there to do their sacrifice. He's then the prophet. He repeated the prophet. All people. So Jewish people and all the people in the world, that includes us in Madison, Wisconsin, right? Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Mm -hmm. What is that prophecy there? You will proclaim the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. You will prophesy as the Spirit of God leads you. And we'll talk about the gifts later on, how you can work in the gift of knowledge and wisdom and all the other gifts that the Spirit of God will give you to help you proclaim the gospel. The, the purpose of all the gifts and this gift of the Holy Spirit is so that we would lift up the name of Jesus in the world. And that's what Peter did here, right? He said, your young men will prophesy, your, your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your young men will, will see visions, and your old men, I'm not quite there yet, will see dreams, dreams. And even on my servants, both men and women, look, God looks at men and women what? Equal. Right? The world says the men are ahead of that women, and the blah, 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 all the negative stuff. Listen, let's get over it. God looks at you as just as precious as He looks at the man. He'll put in you His Spirit so you can proclaim, go, proclaim the gospel just like anyone else. Our traditions and our customs and blah has, has hindered us from seeing the gospel move all over the world. Well, I can't preach because I'm not a, I'm a, man, a woman and, and I have to be under... You know what? Let's get over it. Yeah. Let's do what the Word of God says. You be empowered by God to proclaim the gospel. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost just like any man can. And every, and every man can be full just like every woman can. Let's get over this and get past this and begin to preach the gospel. Our purpose in the world yes. is to lift up and glorify Jesus. There's yes. nothing else greater than that in our lives that we can accomplish. I don't care if you have 20 doctors. I don't care what you research or found. I don't care what your business is. I don't care what... Lift up the name of Jesus wherever you're at. Amen. And you can't do it on your own. That's why God sent you the Holy Spirit. We need to be full of the Holy Spirit. We need to, we had the Holy Spirit deposited in us as the day we believe. But now we need the fullness of the Holy Spirit so the rivers of living water will flow out of us. It's life-giving water. It's water that people will drink of and, and, and drink and they'll come and know the fullness of God. Their sins will be forgiven. They'll be healed of sicknesses and yes. disease. They'll conquer death. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what the Word of God says. Glory we have victory over everything in our lives. Right. Amen? I need the Holy Spirit. I need Him. I need to be baptized. I need to be full of the Spirit of God. I need Him to help me do fulfill what the Scriptures say in my life. Not what Pastor Bob says, but what this says. Then it looks at what it says in. And then I will pour out my spirit in, in those days. That's, this time is those days. Amen. 
And they will prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven and above, and signs on the earth below. Signs and wonder will follow them that believe. Andy said it a, little, a few weeks ago. You'll do greater works than Jesus, so signs and wonders will follow them and believe. What does that mean? What are signs and wonders? Wouldn't it be a sign if you raised the dead? Yes. Wouldn't it be a sign if somebody had a broken arm, you prayed for him, and it was healed? Wouldn't it be a sign that a down and you know, a person just hurting their life situations have caused them to be, go down a road that was just horrible. And then you bring life to that life. And God restores that life to what a child and a daughter of the kingdom of God. And all of a sudden their life is changed. Their children are changed. Their hope, the heritage of all, all the curses of the past are broken because now you were able to share Jesus with them. Hallelujah. We'd have joy all over Madison. People would be happy all over Madison. They'd be like shouting, what, what's happened to you? Jesus came into my life. Yeah. I was lost and now I'm found. I need that power. I can't do it on my own. I get scared, you know. Hard to believe, right? I, I don't want to, I'm not going to share Jesus with them. They might reject me. That's what I think when that happens. And I get that thoughts too, just like everybody else. I get those thoughts. Mm -hmm. But I think, if I can, can, can confess Jesus before these people, that Jesus said, I can't confess. Wow. Ah, that's heavy as Matthew 6. That's heavy. No, I want, I want, first of all, I want all the Father has. I took salvation, right? I received salvation by faith in Him, right? I recognize that I was a sinner because the Spirit of God came to me and said, hey, you're a sinner. you got a lot of problems, buddy. I mean, you spent a lot of time with me, the Lord's Spirit did at that moment. He like went through all my sin. Right? I mean, I had hours worth of sin. <laughs> Showed them all to me, right? And I said, oh, I'm a sinner. And but the Holy Spirit did say, hey, I want to tell you, this Jesus, he wiped all those sins away. And I'm telling you, just like a, like a vision, all my sins were wiped off. And something happened in me. I was like, because I believed that Jesus was the Son of God at that moment. I believed everything that I learned from the Catholic Church about Jesus. I learned everything that these preachers were telling me. I finally believed that Jesus can forgive me. And all of a sudden, I became alive. There was joy in my heart. I couldn't explain it. Why I'm sitting in jail. Why am I in joyful? I look the happiest guy in jail. Because <laughs> instantly I began to share that same truth with the people around me. It just flowed, right? You need Jesus too. I can tell you you're free. You don't have to feel bad. You need Jesus to say, oh, man, I was a, I, I didn't know what I was talking about, but I just, <laughs> <laughs> it was God that used me then at that moment. I was just crazy. I'm crazy for Jesus. I'm still crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so let's go back. So then it says, Then the sun will turn into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. Jesus is coming back. Amen. And anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So we have a responsibility. Everybody that calls on God will be saved, but we have to prophesy. We have to proclaim Jesus. We have to share Jesus with the world. That's why we need the power of the Spirit of God in our life. We need a, the rivers of living water. We need, a, we need Jesus to flow out of us in a mighty, mighty way. Hallelujah. We need Jesus. We need to accept the fact that Jesus is baptizing us in the Spirit. That's from Jesus. Jesus is going to, He died for you. He's going to give you a good gift. He's going to give you a good gift. This gift is from the Father. I was thinking about getting a little box. I was telling Tina, let's get some boxes, like a bunch of boxes and put $20 in it, right? And give it out to everybody. Yeah. And say, okay, you know, this gift is from you. And just watch who would open it up. Somebody just take the gift. Oh, it's a nice gift. Thank you, Pastor. And just hold it, you know. They would open the gift up. This gift is for everybody. Yes. And then the ones that would open up go, whoa, I got 20 bucks, right? <laughs> you know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, right? That's what the Holy Spirit does. It's a gift that God's given everybody. And he doesn't, you don't have to open it. You don't have to. But when you open it, it's a blessing and an empowerment and a freedom in God. Yeah, I can be the missionary. I can proclaim the gospel. I can do all these wonderful things. And I want more. I want more of what God has for me. I want more. Hey, I'm happy. I'm saved. But I'm telling you, folks, I'll 
say that for next week. There's a gift, there's a, there's a benefit of doing the work that God's called you to do. We're going to stand before Jesus in the judgment seat. Man, I want to, I want to present to you. I want to, I tell you about God, uh, I, tell you, I want everybody that is associated with Capital City Church, I want to be able to, when I get to heaven, I want to present all of you to Jesus. I don't want to be like, hey, Jesus, look what I did. No, I want to say, look, Jesus, these are yours. Thank you for using me. Thank you for helping me to bring them to a full knowledge of Christ in their life. Thank you, God, right? I can't do that. Pastor Andy can't do that. Pastor Tim, we can't do that. The Holy Spirit does that in your life. Amen? Because when you have to hear the sermon today, nobody's going to listen to it again. They're going to throw it up on the website, you know. Maybe this lady this morning would listen to it, right? She called this morning looking for a church home. So that was kind of neat to listen to our website. So praise the Lord for that. But you guys won't. But I, but I want you to just desire Jesus. Desire. Yeah. I want more of the Holy Spirit in my life. Be obedient, like Jesus said, so I can do all these things for the kingdom. Amen. I want more. I want more. Matter of fact, when I we're gonna end the service here just now in a second here. Believe it or not, I'm gonna stop talking. I know it's hard to believe. But you know what I want? I want you, if you want to, and if you want more, to come to the altar. Kneel here. A lot of people don't know this, but you know, I mean old church, we had an altar where people would kneel down before God, right? And they would they would just kneel and say, God, oh God, please forgive me. And I remember crying over, I remember I was a time where I was struggling with my relationship with God. And I went to, I was in Okinawa, Japan. And I hadn't been to church for a while because, um, you know, I was, I was up north in Okinawa and the church were down south. I didn't have a vehicle. But anyway, I finally got a vehicle and I went down to the church. First thing I did is I go down to this church called Neighborhood of Something God Church in Okinawa, Japan. In Naha City, I think it's Naha City or Okinawa City, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I got into church and listened to the sermon, right, and and sat there. And as everybody left the church, and it was like just like regular church, some people, you know, church over, boom, there was gone. But I went down to the altar, having her crying out to God, "Oh God, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Oh God, let me feel Your presence. Oh God, I want just fill me again, fill me again with Your power, right?" I remember crying out, and the pastor was sitting in the back, listening to me, right? I'm a, and I learned, when I was in, you know, I grew up, my pastor, Pastor Joe Stenson, who's with God now, and you go down and pray, you pray till you're, till you're done, right? Don't just like, don't, I mean, go down there until you, when you touch the hem of his garment, you know, just pray until Jesus, you're done. And we're not used to be taught, we're not taught that. You know, it's a two-minute prayer, you know, we get up and we go. I'm not telling you a limit, I'm just trying to tell you, would you come? And say, Jesus, I want more of your spirit. For you that are, you think you're all there, come and get more of what God has, right? Mm -hmm. Come, God, I want more. Whatever you have for me, God, I want. I need you. Can we can we show? I want to show, um, I want to show this video. This video, you anybody seen the Chewbacca lady video where she's laughing and giggling, right? Well, this Chewbacca lady was in a she's in a Pentecostal church. And she um, is like most Christian, like Christian, you know, she's doing, she's on a worship team, she's serving God, right? But she didn't have no, she, didn't, she, she heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but she wasn't really sure about it. She thought it was just for everybody else. But we read it's for all people, right? Then we just read that? It's for everyone, right? But she was like, you know, and she's an amazing singer and everything, you know, honoring God. But she wasn't walking in the fullness of God, mm -hmm. right? And she shares her story on how she transitioned from that moment of, just being a Christian to one that is desiring the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thought it would be good for us to listen to it. Can you give me about, it's I think about four minutes long or so. Would you give me that time? Then I'm going to come up and I really want to challenge you. So get out of your seats. And just come and say, Holy Spirit, I want more. I want more. Whatever you have, Holy Spirit.